good charge boy ross back at again with another video so we're gonna check out john cena reveals truth on the austin theory promo by not sam clips i believe he uh i guess he was on a show on sirius xm talking about that specific um situation that uh specific promo segment i'm not gonna lie to you he definitely did <laughs> i'm gonna keep saying this he preheated my boy austin theory to 350 degrees put him in the oven let him cook let him bake took him out let him cooled off and served him to everyone that was in that arena and everyone at home because man oh man that was, he he was hitting him with some haymakers but that's always been john cena he always he comes out there and he'll hit you with the truth you know and it kind of reminds me if you guys remember when when he, the the back and forth he had with roman reigns he was hitting Roman Reigns with a lot of truths about what what pretty much management wanted him to be and what he he wasn't, what the fans weren't buying into, and and how he was doing it better part time than Roman Reigns could ever do it full time. And it's crazy how things have turned around, and Roman is literally at the top of the industry. You know, I'm not saying that promo. You know, I guess you can say you know changed him because it didn't obviously he was still booked as this uh uh baby face that people weren't buying into but i'm pretty sure he probably took some lessons and 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 took some ideas from that promo and and maybe uh you know kind of you know i guess you could say learn from that situation because once again john cena cooked him too so we're gonna check out see exactly what john cena meant by this whole promo segment appreciate all love and support you guys are showing on channel and let's get right into this one as soon as my mouse will work there we go <laughs> my mouse wasn't working y'all i couldn't i couldn't switch over couldn't switch i thought it was gonna do it while i was talking but no i didn't want to switch over now it, we can get into you it have to fans can see through the bs mm -hmm. if you don't believe in your character it's what i said to austin theory Dude, you are young. You are athletic. You will work for this company. You'll do interviews. You'll go X, Y, and Z. I don't believe what you do when you're out there. Mm. I don't. I said it to him personally before I said it publicly. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I said yeah, that it's a tough pill in, to swallow. In a room with Austin Theory, I said, the reason I came back to Boston is because you can't do this yourself yet. Mm. You cannot carry a WrestleMania promo yourself yet. And if you fail, we waste the equity that I'm willing to give. Damn, that's very interesting. He said the reason why I came back and he told them this privately before he cooked them publicly. Damn, so he he pre-baked him. <laughs> he had him already. He had the seasonings all on him before he even preheated the oven. That's crazy. But he he was trying to give him some game. Like you're not ready to take on this promo battle by himself. Because I'm sure John. Would have been okay, you know what I'm saying? Maybe not, you know. I, of course, he obviously didn't have a problem being there in Boston and stuff like that. But, you know, I'm pretty sure he would have been okay if Austin Theory would have been able to just pretty much carry this this feud, this promo battle one side and maybe John do it off, you know, like via satellite or something like that, um, you know, depending on where he was or what his schedule was. But he obviously knew. Austin Theory is not ready to do this by himself. Like carry a segment and promo by himself. John can do that. We've seen John carry a promo segment by himself. You guys remember when he was feuding uh, with The Undertaker and trying to get a match with him? The Undertaker really wasn't saying anything. He was pretty much carrying those segments by himself. It was just pretty much John, you know what I'm saying, pretty much trying to get Undertaker to accept this challenge. That's literally all it was. And it was quite entertaining when he was doing that. So I get that, you know, what he's, what he's trying to reference here. And if in that match I get hurt, I hold up a production, which puts 300 people out of work. Let's do this right. Let, let's get some equity here. And then you have to start thinking about the angles of, well, what's the most important thing? And what are we really trying to tell? And what's our story? And Okay, I don't... I don't believe what you do. That's what I'm going with. Wow. For the Austin Theory match, you came out for you had one promo mm -hmm. right before WrestleMania. Yeah, that's it. Brutality. <laughs> you come out and you go. You brought up the piped in 
crowd noise. Cool. Yeah. Which is like, when you go out now, do you go out going like, look, I know what this is about, and we're going in the deep end. Like, do you do stuff like that knowingly so that it's like, look, Theory, like, this is a huge moment for you, but in order for it to be a huge moment, I need to make this difficult for you. Mm. No, uh, no. Austin is great and easy to work with, mm -hmm. and we wrote that together. He was in every step of the process. Damn. And there comes a point where, you know, you need some creative sometimes people need creative solitude so they're like I'm gonna go away and write my thing and then come back and run it by you and see if it's okay and there are some guys who are just like see you out there mm. yep I, mm. and that's and, and th there are individuals out there they don't they don't trade bars with you in the back about what they're gonna say nah I'll see you out there because one they trust you enough to be a professional and two it, it, it comes off of a little bit more genuine because a lot of times they maybe have bullet points, but they're going to react to what you say. And that takes a special talent. That takes a special individual to just go out there, not know what you're about to say, and just have at it. I'll see you out there. Let's let's make some magic. Let's make some money. That's a different that's a different uh, type of dynamic. But the fact that they actually discussed this and kind of went back and forth, that's crazy. Austin Theory willingly was cool with himself getting cooked. That's crazy. I, I can dress for weddings or funerals, man. Just tell me what color suit to wear. You mm -hmm. know, like I don't mind. I respect everyone's process. Yeah. But I do know from all my experience, if you do not have something they care about, you do not have something. Mm. That's it. So my job is to make them care. And this is not a process that I just do with Austin Theory. If you track back, and I've missed a bunch of times too. I've tried to tried to care. I've been too quirky at times. Tried to be funny and failed. But I'm mm -hmm. trying. I'm always trying to make John you has care. He definitely had some moments where he wasn't funny. That's been the way since I was doing raps. Like people would want to hear the lines, and then people wouldn't want to hear the lines. And like, yeah, you can do your rap thing. I'm just gonna kick the crap out of you in the ring. Fine. It doesn't. That doesn't matter. What matters is me making them connect and believe. Because if they believe and maybe they laugh. Then they feel sad for me when you kick kick the crap out of me, mm -hmm. you know. And then I can get away with something like my ethos is persistence, because years from now people can just be like, "Yeah, that actually kind of is what he does. He's just, gosh, he just keeps showing up, you know. Like, <laughs> it, man, he's just here a lot. Like, that's I feel like that's your legacy is the thing. It's like I've been telling you this is me for all these years, and it's just going to take this many years for you to realize. But that's the thing about authenticity. The you yes. can't. You can't shake hands with someone for the first time and them know your soul mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, i'm blessed enough to be able to now for people to reflect and see like man he is authentically that he authentically has passion for the company my goal is to authentically leave it better than when i found it like that's to my goal is to pass the torch up mm -hmm. i don't ever want to be talked about generations from now they should be talking about roman and whoever follows him and whoever follows him because mm -hmm. that's how it should be mm -hmm. They should be. That's, he, he said it right. He, he's done. He's done all he could do. And it's crazy to say how much John has gotten so much hate over the years. And that's obviously because Vince just, you know, he would not want to change his character for no reason whatsoever. Um, but looking back on it now and where we are now in his career and what he's been doing as a late, you know, pretty much becoming a big a uh, movie star it's crazy the reaction and the love universally now that john cena gets where i remember a time it was yays and mostly booze now anytime john cena is around is nothing but pure love because whether you like him liked him or not you can't deny the dude he definitely cared for the business he may not have been the best in the ring but he he cared and he was the 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 needle mover for he was the face of WWE for so many years. People were wanting to see John Cena, you know? So it's crazy how times have changed. In stadiums instead of arenas every night. Like, that's how it should be. That's the that's the burden that Roman has on his shoulders, mm -hmm. you know? Like, but that's the way it's supposed to go. But too many people get caught up in the I'm this, I'm that. I'm, I am a pawn on the chessboard. 
and someone tells me, okay, we're going to move you with this guy, we're going to do this, go. And it's the same with movies. It's not, I don't call the shots. And it's even more restricted in movies because on set, I can call the shots, but I'm not following the director into the edit. At least in live entertainment, if I want to drop a pipe bomb, I can do it. Right. And deal with the consequences afterwards. I got to be accountable. Mm-hmm. But I got my five minutes to, to throw two middle fingers up to the world. You don't have that in a movie. If you do it every take, they'll just cut on the back of your head. <laughs> like they'll cut around you to get what they want. So why not embrace the process? Work with everyone instead of against everyone. Don't think the world is against you because it's not. The wrestling business is a business, and their business is to make money. Right. And if you're of value to them, if you're of value to the movie system, if you don't cost them a tremendous amount of money, if you show up on time, if you're passionate about the work, if you know the context of the story, if you know why we're fighting, they might ask you back. Going. So when I talk to somebody like Theory who's got stars in his eyes and at 25 thinks he's got you know a, a long road in front of him, I'm like, man, you, you really need to start now failing Mm. Mm. don't just perform fail like a lot and then one day you'll get it Mm -hmm. you need to have like 85 suffering succotash moments Mm. (laughs) i like that reference 85 suffering succotash moments that's good that's that's some good advice bro that's some real good advice he says you need to start failing now and it's the truth you need to start to fail now because when you fail, it's not the end of the world. You're able to learn from that failure, grow from that. And now you'll be able to avoid that or be more comfortable going forward. It's the same way with comedians. Comedians, I don't think that I've ever heard a comedian say they never got in booth. There's a, there's a point in a comedian's life where they, they go to some type of open mic or whatever, bar or whatever, and someone boos them or someone's not laughing. They're just bored. Like it's not getting over. Then they, they try to find something that gets it, that gets them over until they, they're able to consistently get people to laugh at their jokes. It's the same way with delivering these promos and making people believe in your character, whether you're a heel or a baby face, you, you gotta fail. Roman Reigns had to go through the suffering succotash moment. You have to stumble. You have to fail. Because when you fail, then you'll learn what not to do. And then eventually, you should be able to be more comfortable, more, uh, I guess you could say, at ease with your promo abilities and making people believe in your character to the point where it's nothing. It's natural. And that is, that's always a good life lesson. Not even just a wrestling lesson. It's a good life lesson. There's nothing wrong with failing at the beginning. That's what you're supposed to do. It's getting back up, learning from your mistakes, and moving past that. That's literally what it is. At the end of the day, you're not going to be all, it's rare that someone's just, they come into the business and they just got it. No, they got to fail to become what they're trying to become at the end of the game. You know what I'm saying? Your goal is to always to get better. So, yeah, man. This was this was dope, man. This was a a uh, a dope little segment of the interview. If y'all want me to check out more clips from this particular interview, I definitely will because I, I definitely want to see what John Cena has to say. So comment down below. Let me know what's your favorite John Cena promo. What is your favorite like promo segment he's ever been a part of? What's your favorite one out of his entire career? Let me know down below. But I appreciate all love and support you guys on my channel. Road to 150K. And I'm still getting the speed of YouTube. Rest in the world. Appreciate y'all keeping me. See y'all next one. Peace.